Hey, g'day guys. For those of you who don't recognise us, my name is Matthew Arnold. I'm a commercial helicopter pilot based out of Australia. Today's video is the second in a series of how to be prepared for your Australian CASA navigation exam, specifically looking at the 1 in 60 rule or the 1 in 60 calculation. With the video guys, I've tried to structure it in such a way that the first example is a nice, simple example, really just to give you a basic understanding of how the 1 in 60 rule works and how to actually complete a 1 in 60 calculation. From there, I've tried to get increasingly complex with each example, right up until the point where the final example is as complex or as difficult, if not more difficult, than what you will actually get in the CASA exam. My primary advice to you is as you do prepare for the Australian CASA navigation exam, is to really have a good understanding of how to do a 1 in 60 rule calculation. There will be several questions in the navigation exam around this topic, so if you are going to attempt the exam and come out with the pass mark you're looking for, you really do need to be comfortable and confident with this topic. With that in mind guys, let's crack into it. So in order to get the most out of today's video guys, you'll need a couple of things. You'll need a pen or a pencil, an eraser, a ruler and a calculator. I really do encourage you to be proactive, so take your own notes, do your own calculations, pause the video where necessary. Don't just kind of sit back and, and, and watch the video like you would just a normal YouTube entertainment video. So the first thing I want to talk about guys is what is the run in 60 rule and why does it matter? So the run in 60 rule is just a quick and easy way of calculating out what heading changes require to arrive at your destination if you are off track. So when would you use the 1 in 60 rule? So theoretically guys, you'd use it in flight. So you may be off course due to an unexpected crosswind, or you may be off course due to the forecast wind being stronger or weaker than when you plan your flight. In reality, but guys, once you actually get your license, whether it be your private license or your commercial license, the majority of flying you'll be doing will be using a GPS. And so you really, so the 1 in 60 will become a little bit redundant. Where you will use it a heck of a lot is in preparation for the exam. Uh, at the time of recording this video, both the fixed wing and the rotary wing exam for the CPL navigation subject are the same, and that the exam does have several 1 in 60 questions in it. Uh, as previously stated, you will need to be comfortable and confident calculating these out if you're going to get the result that you're actually looking for. So first example, guys, let's really sort of get stuck into it here. You're travelling from point A to point B, a distance of 40 nautical miles. At the 20 nautical mile mark, you find yourself 4 nautical miles off track. What is your track error? So with all my videos, guys, with all of my examples, the one thing I say to all of my students is get your pen or your pencil out and start mapping this out. Start, like, mud mapping it. So you're flying from point A to point B. At the 20 nautical mile mark, you find yourself 4 nautical miles off track. So if I was in an exam situation, this is exactly what I would have on my school pad. The formula for the run 60 rule is quite a simple formula. If you can remember this formula, regardless of how complex or how difficult the question is, if you, if you draw, the, draw the question out and then write the formula down, you'll get it correct every single time. So the formula is distance off track divided by distance along track multiplied by 60 gives you a track error. So it looks somewhat like this. So, so the answer is actually 4 nautic miles off track, which is your distance off track, divided by 20, which is your distance along track, times 60, gives you 12 degrees track error. So similar question to the last one, guys. Travelling from point A to point B, a distance of 45 nautic miles. At the 15 nautic mile mark, you find yourself 1 nautic mile off track. What is your track error? Once again, guys, draw the question out. So you fly from point A to point B. At the 15 nautical mile mark, you find yourself one nautical mile off track. Formula, always the same formula. Distance off track divided by distance along track multiplied by 60 equals your track error. So the answer, one nautical mile off track divided by 15 nautical miles along track times 60 equals four degrees track error. Getting a little bit more complex here guys, travelling from point A to point B, a distance of 60 nautical miles. At the 20 nautical mile mark, you find yourself 2 nautical miles off track. Calculate the required heading to change to arrive at your destination. 
So unlike the last two examples where we just want to know what our track error was, with this example we actually want to find out what, what heading change we need to do to actually arrive back at point B. So as always guys, draw it out. So point A to point B, at the 20 nautical mile mark, we're 2 nautical miles off track, giving us 40 miles left to run to arrive back at our destination, point B. So with this one guys, it's split into two steps, so leg one and leg two. So two separate, two separate legs, two separate calculations. Formula, even though we've got two legs here, same formula. Distance off track divided by distance along track multiplied by 60 is our track error. So the first thing we do here guys is, is, is our step one. So what we effectively want to do is work out what we need to do to bring ourselves parallel back to track. So two nautical miles off track divided by 20 nautical miles along track times 60 gives us 60 degrees. So for us to bring ourselves back parallel to track to effectively running on that yellow dotted line there, we will need to make a heading change of 60 degrees. Our leg two, so once we're parallel to track, to bring ourselves back to point B is distance off track is 2 nautical miles, distance long track is 40, times 60 equals 3 degrees track error. That's the amount of change we need to that's the change we need to make once parallel to track. So to arrive at, at our answer, we add our 6 degrees track error for our first leg, plus our 3 degrees track error to bring ourselves back onto track gives us a 9 degrees heading change required. Another example here guys, similar to the last one, you find yourself travelling point A to point B, a distance of 100 nautical miles. At the 40 nautical mile mark, you find yourself 20 nautical miles off track. Calculate the required heading change to arrive at your destination. As always guys, draw the question out. Point A to point B, 40 nautical miles long track, 20 nautical miles off track, is our first measuring mark, and then 60 miles left to run to get us to our point B. Once again guys, two legs, leg one and leg two. First step here, oh, sorry, formula, always the same formula. Distance off track divided by distance along track multiplied by 60 equals track error. If I sound like I'm repeating myself a lot here guys, it's because I kind of am, you need to remember this formula. So once again guys, step one here is to work out what we need to do to bring ourselves back parallel to track. So three nautical miles off track, divide about 40 nautical miles along track gives us 4.5 degrees track error. So we actually need to do a heading change of 4.5 degrees to bring ourselves parallel back to our track. Our step two here, three nautical miles off track divided by 60 nautical miles along track gives us three degrees. So once we're parallel to our track, we need to turn an additional three degrees to bring ourselves back to point B. So our answer for our question here, 4.5 degrees track error for our first one, our three degrees track Correction for our second leg gives us a total heading change required of 7.5 degrees. Next step here, once again guys, getting a little bit more complex. <clears throat> and this is probably about as complex as what the CASO exam will give you. So you're travelling from point A to point B, a distance of 100 nautical miles. At the 20 nautical mile mark, you find yourself 3 nautical miles off track. At the 50 nautical mile mark, you find yourself 5 nautical miles off track. Calculate the required heading change to arrive at your destination. So once again, guys, we draw the question out. So point A to point B. Our first stop here is at the or first major mark here is a 20 mile mile mark. We're three nautical miles off track. Our second measuring point here is at 50 nautical mile mark, so additional 30 nautical miles along course, and we're now five nautical miles off track. And our third measuring point, so our third so our final so measuring point is back at our destination at the 100 nautical mile mark. So guys, you split this one out. So three different legs here. Leg one, leg two, and leg three. With this one, guys, the first thing we need to do here is just effectively ignore leg one. With a run 60 rule calculation, we only ever work off the final two legs. So what that becomes, our second leg here becomes 30 nautical miles along track and two nautical miles off track. Once again guys, formula remains the same, distance off track divided by distance along track multiplied by 60 equals our track error. So the first thing we do here guys is work out what we need to do to bring ourselves back parallel to track. 
So leg two, two nautical miles off track divided by 30 nautical miles long track times 60 gives our 40 degree track area. So we need to turn 40 degrees to bring ourselves back parallel to track. Our second step here is five nautical miles off track divided by 50 mile, nautical miles long track times 60 gives our 60 degrees additional heading change required. So a total heading change required here of four plus six equals 10. So you can start to see guys, now that we're stepping into more complex questions, the requirement to actually draw out the question really to, to sort of simplify it out on paper. As I'm sure you can begin to envisage, if you're in a CASO exam situation, you're a little bit time pressured and you're trying to do these calculations without actually taking the time to draw it out, very quickly and very easily, you'll end up with an incorrect answer. Got to draw it out, guys. You've got to draw it out. Next question here, guys. Similar to the last one, you're traveling from point A to point B, a distance of 130 nautical miles. At the 30 nautical mile mark, you find yourself 2 nautical miles off track. At the 70 nautical mile mark, you find yourself 5 nautical miles off track. Calculate the required heading change to arrive at your destination. As always, guys, draw the question out. Point A to point B, first measuring point 30 nautical miles long track, 2 nautical miles off track. Second measuring mark is an additional 40 nautical miles long track, so 70 nautical miles in total. We now find ourselves 5 nautical miles off track. Our final leg here at the 100, so 130 nautical miles for the total distance, back to point B. So once again, guys, split this leg, split this here into three legs. Leg one, leg two, and leg three, and ignore leg one. You only ever work off your current leg and your future leg. So it gives us our leg two here of 40 nautical miles along track and three nautical miles off track. Formula remains the same, guys. Distance off track divided by distance along track multiplied by 60 gives us our track error. So our leg two track here, to bring ourselves back parallel to track, three nautical miles off track divided by 40 nautical miles along track times 60 gives us 4.5 degrees track error. So 4.5 degrees to bring ourselves back parallel to track. And then five nautical miles off track divided by 60 nautical miles along track times 60 gives us a five degrees track error or heading change required to bring ourselves back to point B. Add those two together. 4.5 plus 5 equals 9.5 heading change required. So at the end of leg 2, that our second measuring mark, a 7 nautical mile mark, we would need to adjust our heading or adjust our track by 9.5 degrees to arrive at our destination. Final two examples here, guys, and these are probably as complex, if not a little bit more complex than what you'll actually get in the CASA exam. I wanted to include these because if you can, if you can get your head around how to do these calculations and how simple it actually is to do these calculations, you'll have no problems at all in your CASA exam. So you're traveling from point A to point B, a distance of 100 nautical miles. At the 30 nautical mile mark, you find yourself two nautical miles to the left of track. At the 70 nautical mile mark, you find yourself two nautical miles to the right of track. Calculate the heading change to right, right at your destination. As always guys, and explain Especially as the question gets more complex, you've got to draw it out. So point A to point B. First leg, 30 nautical miles, 2 nautical miles to the left of track. Our second leg is a total of 70 nautical miles, and we find ourselves 2 nautical miles to the right of track. And our final leg here is 100 nautical miles back to destination B. So with this one guys, we split it into effectively four legs. Leg one, leg two, leg three and leg four. The key at this point guys is to really just simplify the question. Take out leg one and leg two. Leg one and leg two are of no relevance. Once you take these two legs out, if you're using a pencil, you can even go through and scratch them out entirely with an eraser. Ultimately guys, what you want to work on is leg three and leg four and it becomes quite a simple calculation. Formula remains the same. Distance off track divided by distance along track multiplied by 60 is our track error. So our leg three, to bring ourselves back parallel to track, two nautical miles off track divided by 20 nautical miles long track times 60, gives a six degree track, track error to bring ourselves back to parallel. And two degrees off track divided by 30, 30 degrees long track times 60 
gives that 40 degree track area to bring ourselves back parallel to the track. So the answer 6 plus 4 is just a 10 degree heading change required. So as you can see guys, quite a complex question, quite sort of what, what could in an exam situation can be quite confusing, quite overwhelming. When you actually draw it out, when you simplify the question, take out leg 1 and take leg 2, it's actually quite a simple calculation. So final example here guys, kind of similar to the last one. You're travelling from point A to point B, a distance of 110 nautical miles. At the 20 nautical mile mark, you find yourself 2 nautical miles to the right of track. And at the 50 nautical mile mark, you find yourself 2 nautical miles to the left of track. Calculate the required heading change to arrive at your destination. As always guys, draw it out. So point A to point B. First point, reference point here is 20 nautical miles along track, 2 nautical miles off track. Our second reference point is a total of 50 nautical miles along track, and we're now we've gone from two nautical miles to the right from the right of track to two nautical miles to the left of track. We want to calculate our final sort of heading required to get us to our point B. So once again, guys, four legs here: leg one, leg two, leg three, and leg four. As always, guys, simplify, simplify it out, draw it out, simplify it out. So leg one and leg two become of no relevance. Our formula remains the same, distance off track divided by distance along track multiplied by 60 equals track error. What we'll want to do guys, first step here is to figure out what we need, what heading change required to bring ourselves back parallel to track. So that's our 2 nautical miles off track divided by, our, divided by our 15 nautical miles along track times 60 gives us an 8 degree track error, 8 degree heading change required to bring ourselves back parallel to track. And secondly, guys, have two nautical miles off track divided by our 60 miles along track, or 60 nautical miles left to run, times 60 gives us our 2 degrees heading change required there. 8 plus 2 equals a 10 degree right heading change required. So that's the end of the instructional video, guys. I really do hope you found it beneficial. If you do have any questions or comments or feedback, I'd love to hear what you thought of the video, if you found it helpful. Uh, just please leave those in the YouTube comments there or whatever social media platform you're on. Um, as I say, I really would like to receive your feedback and if I can offer you any further assistance, I, I, I'd like to do that as well. So uh, best of luck guys with the exam and, and have yourself a fantastic day. Cheers.